Fred, we're now approaching the end of the course and it's time to kind of combine a lot of the stages uh, that we've learnt so far. And this one here is called the Pan Marino. It's a bread that I was taught at the School of Arts and Food when I attended a course there a few years ago and it was a really, really popular loaf when I did market stalls. The combination of rosemary and a sweetness of honey combined with Italian flour and olive oil and some salt on the surface of the crust really combines to make just the most beautiful combination of bread. It is so light and airy and it's so many things that just work together. Rosemary and honey, honey and white flour, Italian tastes and rosemary. Um, and olive oil and you know it's just a combination of so many things that it just tastes absolutely beautiful so let's go and make one and it starts off with a refreshed sourdough so we're going to take a bit of sourdough our right, established one here and we're going to add this with a little bit of flour and a little bit of water just a small amount and this then becomes the next part of our beaker which we then combine later on. So we have stage one, the first refreshment, and stage two where we combine more flour, more water with the, with the uh, sourdough refreshment and then we then put that the following day into our dough. We'll start off with our water which is a measly 18 grams. And then we're going to take our sourdough, which, which is 36 grams. And then we take our flour, which is 24 grams. Let's give it a mix with our fingers, or finger. And of course, we just want to use a small little pot for this. Okay, so the reason why we're doing a refreshed sourdough as opposed to a straight sourdough is that it's mainly about the flavour. We don't want too much of that aromatic, nutty, alcoholic kind of flavour that we get from uh, a straight sourdough. So if we just take it apart and refresh it, then that kind of dilutes that flavour. But if we get it on its peak, on its way up, um, of rising, then it's going to be its most active and that means it's going to raise the loaf uh, at the most ferocious rate that it can do. So we leave this now for about 12 hours. We could if we wanted to put a tiny pinch of yeast, maybe uh, I think it's about a gram or something in there. I'll put that in the recipe below if you wanted to add that. The uh, yeast would then mean it would be ready in about four hours. So potentially what we would do is we could make this at the start of our um, baking session, then we could leave it um, leave it after four hours, we could then refresh it with the second refreshment, um, and then that would then be ready for the next day, for the next bake. So to refresh this little beauty, this is our sourdough starter that we took a little bit of and just refreshed it. So it was basically just our own little mini sourdough. So the amount of water is 24 grams, still on the little one. Okay, and then the flour, the flour is just 30 grams. Then all we need to do is take this out here and mix it in with that. Now you could, if you wanted to, start in a larger bowl and then move to, and then just refresh the same one if you wanted to. So this now, we'll kind of double the size of it and this will be our beaker made from a refreshed sample. Okay, so just a light little, little twizzle like that, and that is gonna be ready to use tomorrow uh, in around another, probably another 12 hours. So this beaker was made at eight o'clock last night. It's now 8.30 in the morning. And as you can see, we've got a lot of gas. 
that is good to go. Um, start off with the flour. Six grams of salt. Just been chilled to 11 degrees. So 201 grams. Okay, so that's the main ingredients for the dough. We've got our bigo, we've got our water, and we've got our flour as well. But we also have the extra ingredients as well that are gonna give it this bread, its classic flavor. First of all, rosemary, fresh rosemary. We've got some honey, and we'll also have some olive oil. So these will be added uh, later on in the mix. Um, at the end of the fast mix, so you don't necessarily need to weigh them right now, but we're going to anyway. So, a tiny bit of olive oil, 2.8 grams, so I'll add a little bit extra in there. It always gets stuck in the bottom, there's an extra gram in there. Um, then the honey, 3.4 grams, which should sit on top. And then lastly, the rosemary, which we're gonna want about 1.7 grams. Uh, we're just gonna pick off all the fine bits because we don't really want the, the stem. We don't, we don't want that, that bit there, we, we don't want, we just want the finer bits. Dough scraper to get all of it out. And we'll chuck in the beaker into there. And we'll chuck in the rest of the water I'm going to pour the rest of the water into the beaker. Just to try and grease all of it. Then we add the flour and the salt. And we start mixing on slow. Slow mix now for eight minutes. Okay, and now we're gonna, it's quite sticky this Italian flour. And then after that, we're gonna go for another six minutes on fast. After eight minutes of mixing, we then wanna add the rest of our wet ingredients to get the bit out, to get it all out, grab a bit of dough, and mop it up with that. Next we're just going to mix this on slow to try and incorporate all the ingredients. So after a minute, minute and a half, we should have everything combined. We just take our dough and put it in a basket to rest. So we're going to leave this to rest for two hours now and um, we're going to put two folds in it. So we'll do one after 45 minutes, another after the next 45 minutes and then half an hour later of rest time we'll then start dividing, moulding and final proving the dough. To give our pan merino a fold after it's 45 minutes, first of all we're going to lightly dust the table, very very lightly, like that. Take our dough out, try and brush away any flour that's remaining on, side, on, on it. Then, fold it over like that. This side fold over like that. Turn that towards, fold over like that, like that. Then into our lightly dusted tray, 
We'll leave that and we'll leave that now for 45 minutes again. Okay, now's the time we're gonna do our second fold on our pan merino, our rosemary bread. So let's take it out. I'm gonna just put it straight onto the table. It's not very sticky, it'll be fine. So stretch it widthways, fold it over, go long ways, fold it over. And we'll just keep folding like that. That's fine. Okay. Just to do a little cupping, just to make it into a bit of a ball. We've got enough flour in there to not have to flour it again. And on there. So we leave that now for half an hour and then we're going to start moulding. We would divide, but there's only one loaf. Divide, then mould our pan merino bread. Okay, so the pan merino is rested now for 20 minutes. So, all we need to do now We've taken the dough out, is do a standard fold. Like that, 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 that. Round over like that. And that is our pre shape. And we can get nice and tight if we can. Pump loads of the air out of it. Here we go, it's nice and firm now. So that can sit there like that. Uh, we can add a little bit more flour into the bottom of the table so it doesn't stick and we're just going to leave it like that for five minutes and then we'll repeat the process again because we're going to keep exactly the same shape a ball and we're going to pop it on a tray now we could decide to use our we could decide to use a basket and I have used baskets for this or a banneton um, to prove our dough but we don't always have to we can just do it straight on a tray and I kind of quite like how this bread doesn't then get the flour on the top of the surface. I think that can kind of detract from what we're going for with this bread. So we're going to do it straight onto the tray and prove it on that. Okay so we have our board which okay so we've got our board which is just our peel. Uh, just rub a little bit of flour in there. Fantastic, clean surface. Okay, okay, okay. So, flatten it out, nice and flat. And then fold in like we would. Really try and get a lot of strength in when you're going around. Get it as strong as possible because you need this to support its own shape. Okay, and there we go. Okay, so that is going to fill out a little bit wide, but it is also going to go up as well. That should be perfect for our pan merino. Next up, we're going to leave this to prove, and it will probably take around two hours. Okay, so the bread's now proved for what, two, two and a half hours. Um, what we need to do now is make sure that it's not going to stick to the tray. So I always just run my dough scraper underneath just to make sure that it's going to be, it's going to come off. It's nothing worse than it getting stuck on your tray. Now what I did halfway through is to get my hands with a bit of warm water and I just rubbed it over the top, okay? And that just helps stop skinning up. There is a slight skin forming now, but that's quite good because we want to be cutting it and the skin will actually mean that we'll be able to cut without the knife sticking to the dough. So for this, it's quite hard. Let's see if I can do it. We're going to do a figure. We're going to do eight cuts. So we do one. Okay. Then we cut again. To, always cut towards. Okay. 
Okay. That should be pretty good. Well, we'll find out. Let's do one more on this one. Yeah. I think that's looking pretty good. I don't really want to be constantly cutting it, but hey, I think that's going to be fine. So, into the oven this goes. A good bit of steam. We don't want the oven too hot. It is hot at the moment, but we want to drop it down to 220 because the oil and the, sh the honey in there will start uh, making the bread go golden. We don't want it to burn. So, in we go. In the oven we go. Let's get the steam. Get the door shut. Okay, so now we'll drop that temperature to 220. And that should come up like a beaut. So our pan marino has baked now for about 35 minutes. Um, I did turn down the heat for the last five minutes to 210, just in case the top of it caught. But now here's the fun bit. Now we're gonna add a tiny little bit of olive oil over the top of the loaf and try and get it into the grooves. And then we take some salt, we sprinkle it on top, and then hopefully that will then stick to the olive oil and it just gives it an extra wow to that bread. There you go, the pan marino.